Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's quickly begin today's video, wherein you will get to learn something new that can help you in your NABAD grade A phase one examination. So let's quickly begin. So guys, I hope all of you know about the live courses that we are taking for RBSAB and NABAD. And we also have a crash course that is also live. So for the NABAD grade so if you want to know more about the courses or you want to enroll in the courses, you can do so through the application as well as through our website. Okay, plus we have the phone number. You can call us from Monday to Saturday, 9 to 6 p.m. And here we have the web email ID. If you don't want to call us, if you don't have that much time, you can also drop us a mail. You will get the reply. Okay, so now let's begin with the question. So the first question is, which state has signed an agreement for becoming a member of the global network called under two coalition to control global warming? So here Punjab guys is the right answer. Now under two coalition, it is very, very evident or I would say the name itself is very evident of the purpose of this coalition under two. That means to uh, contain the temperature, the global temperature under two degrees Celsius, this coalition has been formed. Now, this coalition was formed at the Paris Agreement Conference, okay, to, uh, the COP21 in 2015 when the Paris Agreement was signed. So, at that time, this coalition was also launched to help to complement the Paris Agreement. Now, at this moment, it has 221 states of 43 countries. Now, remember, only 43 countries are members and um, from these 43 countries, we have 221 states. These are jurisdictions, you can say, like we have in India. We have different states. As you can see, a state has joined this coalition. So, states like these join this coalition to make the number of states 221, whereas the number of countries are restricted only to 43. I hope that this is clear and there is nothing much to this news. The next question is, uh, which state has deployed India's first ever teaching robot? So here guys, Eagle is the right answer. Okay, so the name of the teaching robot has been asked from you and not the state. It is Eagle. The name of the robot is Eagle, whereas the state which has um, uh, deployed this robot is Telangana. So in Hyderabad, this robot has been deployed for the school students. So here, this robot has been introduced by Indus Trust named organization in its Indus International Schools, which are located in Hyderabad, Bangalore, Pune and Balgavi. At this moment, this ro robot is only deployed in a school of Hyderabad. However, this statement is telling you about the operations of this Indus Trust. Okay, so soon if this gets successful in the coming 10 to 20 years, we can see the replacement of human teachers by the robot teachers. Let's see what is going to happen in this field. Let's see whether we are going to get unemployed in the future and what is going to happen. But at this moment, it is under its testing stage. Question number three is recently Sanjeevni and e-commerce firm Misho have signed an MOU for the empowerment of 2500 self-help groups sanjeevni is rural is a rural livelihood promotion society of which state so here guys karnataka is the right answer so from the name itself it is evident that the partnership aims to help the self-help groups misho is an e-commerce website that will help these self-help groups in developing their products and uh, basically providing them with a marketplace then as you would know that the Karnataka CM Baswaraj Bomai has completed one year in his office and during that, uh, not actually during that, in commemoration of that event or the anniversary, he has launched certain schemes in Karnataka and this MOU was a part of it. Now another scheme is Punya Yokti, Punya Goti, sorry, Dattu Yojana, that is cow adoption scheme. So under this scheme, basically the cows which do not give milk or the cows uh, or the bovine category uh, animals who are sick they will be adopted okay and in order to increase their adoption the cow shelters or the gov shalas would be given a boost would be strengthened so that they can uh, adopt more and more such cows which are of no economical use to them 
okay usually we see that when the cow or any animal is of no use to the humans they discard that animal as it is in the case of cow so in order to remove or uh, restrict that practice this scheme has been launched furthermore we have the vaitha vidya nidhi scheme now this has not been launched now it was already running the progress of this scheme has been mentioned so the scheme has benefited around 8.5 lakh students from farmers family last year and it is expected to reach 9.80 lakh farmers this year the basic purpose of this scheme is to provide the education to the family to the children of the farms okay so scholarship would be given and i have already told you the occasion moving ahead union minister of fisheries and animal husbandry and dairying shri purushottam rupala has launched the minister's dashboard for animal husbandry and dairying in new delhi which of the following scheme will not be covered on the dashboard so basically the very basic purpose of any kind of website or dashboard is to provide the information similarly this dashboard will also provide information on the schemes of the animal husbandry or fisheries or dairying uh, ministry okay so here you have been given the five options out of which if uh, you are attentive in the class if you are smart enough you can clearly catch the answer here it is very easy it is the national horticulture mission horticulture is nowhere related to animals and this is guys the hint from my side for all of you okay expect or pray for such hints to come in your examination so that you can clear it with flying colors okay so let's move into the details so this dashboard basically provides information on these many schemes of the ministry of animal husbandry dairying and fishery so clearly these schemes are important do remember the schemes next question is which is india's top most fmcg brand as per the kantar uh, india's annual brand footprint report so here parle guys is the right answer now this kantar group is basically a uk based data analytics and brand consultancy firm you must have heard about the report of this organization many times in the news and similarly a report has come up now according to this report fmcg fast moving consumer goods okay the top brand of fmcg uh, in india is parley at this moment and parley has been at this position for almost 10 years consecutively so this is a very big achievement a very big market share that parley has held in indian market then we have amul then we have britannia clinic plus and tata consumer products following this then you would uh, be amazed to know that the top 10 brands out of the top 10 10 brands seven brands are the home grown brands okay the home grown companies so that's all about this report and that is all for today's session yes the today's session was short because there was uh, no such news on which i can make more questions so i think the session is enough for your preparation and if you have any feedbacks to give me you can give it in the comment section below thank you so much guys for watching this video have a good luck good day prepare hard Go goodbye